Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hey, this is Blaze, and this is the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast, and today I want to talk about boredom. Being bored, the experience of being out of your mind with just boredom, and what do we do about it, what's the experience like, and why do we have it, so that we can get a little more comfortable with this feeling that most of us just really try to avoid, and yet we find that it happens all the time. Now, as the mother of an almost five-year-old, I am faced with the, but this is so boring, exclamation from her so many times in a day, and the, why are you being boring? Why won't you play with me? I'm so bored. This show is boring. Like, it's just coming up that she's finally getting in touch with the experience of not enjoying something because it's not that stimulating or interesting. And witnessing her expectations around it. So I think up till now in life, everything has been pretty new. It's pretty easy to not get bored. And now after a year of isolation and, you know, her parents are now starting, like we're working more, we're going out, we're seeing people, um, life is happening again. She's having more opportunities to just be not the center of attention. And she's watched all the shows and she's played all the toys and the games and, you know, she's over it. and <laughs> It's boring. And what do we, what do you do about it? And she's looking to me for guidance about what do you do about being bored? And her expectation is you drop everything immediately, you center your attention on me and you fix it. But that is sadly not how life works. And it's been a, an emotional and disappointing time in her life. And yet there are rewards in boredom. And it's, I remember being told by my parents that, you know, boredom builds character, go outside and just figure it out. And I hated that, that like, go, it builds character. I'm like, what kind of character? Like an angry, depressed, frustrated person. But yeah, it kind of does. It teaches you how to cope with those feelings. And it also gives you this chance to find inspiration, to look at things a different way. And if you're constantly being engaged, if you're constantly having something put in your face that keeps your attention and prevents you from having to feel bored, feel that pause, you're not actually being very creative. You're having someone else's creativity kind of thrown in your face. And as an artist, being bored, honestly, like that was so important. I spent so much time being bored as a teenager, being bored, you know, post-college, just you know, life smacks you in the face and you're like, Oh, this is it. You get up, you make breakfast, you go to work. It's boring as hell. Like you do the same repetitive task. And then you come home after all the filing is done for this other company. And then, you know, I was too poor at that time to really have TV or anything. So it's just, what do you do? You read the same books you've already read, or you just have to come up with something. And so much of my art, my desire to draw, to observe things, to find it interesting was born from that boredom, what a gift it was, really. I think artists probably understand this in a different way, maybe from people who aren't creating art, that to be in that space where you're looking at blankness, it it is boring. It's also scary. You look at this blank page and you're like, ah, now what? (laughs) What do I do? And to look for inspiration, you have to use your senses. You have to re-engage with reality that's in front of you to find something interesting. And is it just holding a pencil? Is it feeling that it's moving and seeing what it's doing and being surprised by a doodle? And then suddenly you find the engagement. Suddenly through being bored and doing quote unquote nothing you start to see something and you start to make sense of it and you you see a different connection, you make a different connection. 
and it grows. So cool. So I've noticed that my daughter has started, that that's really her outlet when she gets bored is she's like, fine, I'm going to go write a story. And she draws these really amazing illustrations. All of them are about her and her horse that she's absolutely convinced we're going to get. Oh, oh my wonderful summer child. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think so. But, um, but she does these illustrations and they explore her day and it's combining her passions, right? So she gets to explore that she's really passionate about horses and ponies and how they have their tails. And she's fascinated by babies. So all of the horses are having babies and she's a doctor and she's, you know, taking care of them. And it's this physical interaction that she has with the page. And it's this exploration of her ideas and her interests. Like she's interested in human bodies and medicine. And there's so many stories that she makes about being a doctor and helping hurt animals and helping deliver horse babies. And it's about fights. She explores what does it mean to have a fight and um, can they resolve their conflict in the story? And all of that happens because she's allowed to just sit with nobody entertaining her with nothing happening to make it better. And it always is prefaced with this, the big complaint, mom, it's so boring. Why, why are you so boring? Well, why don't you, I don't know, read a book, watch a show, whatever. No, I don't want to. And what's interesting though, is that she's still so flexible so in the moment and so able to flow that within minutes of all of the complaining, the big complaint, I can trust that she's going to move through it. And then I'll hear, okay, fine from her. So there's the frustration that comes out like, ah, okay, fine. I'll come up with something to do. And then she does. I think that's the gift of boredom is if you don't jump in and try to fix it, you come up with something cool <laughs> to do. And often it's something that you haven't done before really, or it's, it's a different way of doing something you've done before. I mean, she's certainly illustrated stories before, but she's making a new story. Um, when I'm bored and I'm, you know, I'm bored. I don't want to watch the same show I've watched and I've read this book and I don't really want to play a game. Eventually I come up with something new that I haven't done before where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go for a walk somewhere new. I'm going to go call somebody I haven't talked to in a long time. There's, that's the gift is that it's this push, it's this little kick to do something cool. And there's a lot of great stuff that comes out of it. When I was a kid, my grandmother, um, English was her second language, and she never said, are you bored? If I said I was bored, she'd go, oh, are you boring? And I've really loved that because it reminds me that when I'm bored, I am being boring. And that was a revelation for me too. I'm like, wait, we're bored when we're being boring. If I was going to watch a TV show, I wouldn't want to watch a TV show about someone sitting here going, oh, like scrolling through my phone or watching TV. Like all of the things that I watch or find interesting are people actually engaging with their life. They're going out and meeting people. They're going on an adventure, they're researching something, they're creating something. If I had, if I was my own TV show and people had to see my life, I wouldn't want them to see me just like staring at a wall or just staring at a TV. I don't want that to be my life. So it kind of, it inspires me to not be boring and maybe being bored is the sign that I'm being boring. <laughs> and wow, that changed my mind a lot to take this emotion that's completely normal and happens all the time. And it's, it's this potent thing that can kick us in the butt and say, you're being boring. You feel bored because you're being boring. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? And do you want someone else to swoop in and take care of you and fix it for you? And sometimes of course the answer is yes, because yeah, sometimes 
absolutely. I want someone to come and make me something interesting, tell me something to do because I'm just tired and I'm cranky and I don't want to do it. And other times I can have that feeling go, actually, I want to be the hero here. I want to inspire myself and just go do something new and interesting. And, you know, following my philosophy in life is I I can be with this. I can be bored and it's going to be okay. So if I go out and I start a walk to alleviate the boredom, it's okay with me that I might still be bored at the beginning of the walk and it doesn't immediately go away just because I've decided to kick myself into action. And I notice it's the same with my daughter. Like just because she's decided that she's going to take care of it and do something doesn't mean that she's immediately engaged and happy. Usually there's the tantrum, right? That happens like, this is so boring and this is awful. I can't believe the outrage that you didn't want to fix this for me. And then all of that gets channeled into something. If I go on the walk and I'm bored, sometimes just taking in nature with my eyes, like seeing stuff, starting to look for things, you get to witness stuff that you wouldn't have witnessed otherwise. For me, I'm just so fascinated by how much there is that day by day, I just don't take even a second to engage with or notice. There's so much life in my neighborhood. There's so many people that you know, they're having their own lives. That becomes fascinating for me too, by the way, you go walking through a neighborhood and technically, yeah, you know, like, yeah, you have neighbors and they're all living their lives and their lives are important to them. But as you walk by to be like, wow, it's happening right now, right now, each of these people are engaging in their life, doing something. And some of them might be bored out of their mind. They might be, you know, having the time of their life. They could be on vacation. They could be like, having the romance of their lives or like maybe their career is amazing right now. And I don't know any of that if I don't meet them or engage with them. And it's the same with like the trees and the bugs and just the squirrels in the neighborhood. You're like, they're all living their lives right now. They've been living their lives the whole time and they're completely engaged in it and what's happening. That to me is just fascinating stuff. I love thinking about that. So that, that always will spark me out of being bored And now it occurs to me as I'm saying all this stuff, like the key to unleashing or getting out of that boredom is engagement, but it's not even with yourself. It's about realizing that you need to engage with something outside of yourself to engage with an activity, to think about something that isn't about how you're feeling right now. That isn't about your situation. Boredom is inherently about being self-centered and thinking that your experience and your pleasure is the most important thing and you're not getting it. And that that's, that's the most important thing. But as you turn your attention outward from that and think what's going on for others, what's happening? Do my plants need water? Like, is there something that I could do that might be interesting once the attention is off how I feel about it, there's this whole world of possibility and awesomeness that opens up. Ah, life. It's just so interesting. There's so much going on. And yet we still have this capacity to be bored out of our minds with it, bored of our routines, bored of the experience. But I think that feeling is there for a reason. I think it's there definitely to let us know that we've lost our engagement. We've lost our connection with something outside of ourselves. When a kid is bored, usually they're asking for your attention. They want to connect and you're teaching them that, yeah, we lose connection a lot. And something I tell my daughter is that you need to learn how to be bored and move through that on your own. Cause I'm not always going to be here to fix it for you. And you may find yourself bored a lot in your life without anyone able to swoop in and fix it for you. So you have to learn to find that engagement from within yourself, connecting to anything. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be another person. It can be an activity. It can be anything, but you have to be able to be okay. Just not being entertained. Ah, but I, I feel, yeah, I love being entertained and I want more of that in my life. How am I going to create it? (laughs) 
my friends. I hope that your life is actually really interesting and engaging, that it isn't boring, that you're not being boring, that something cool is happening for you and that you're able to find that connection and, you know, be with that boredom and let it do its work for you. Let it do its magic so that you do reconnect with stuff that's awesome. And if you're having trouble breaking out of that rut and life itself is kind of boring and you're not really feeling what you used to feel, that's where it's time to get some help. It's time to find someone who can help you figure out where the connection has been lost. And whether that's me or anyone else, I wish you to find someone and something that can bring that spark back and get that fire going for you so that you're enjoying life and creating a story that, you know, you love to tell so that your life is just this beautiful tapestry that you're really enjoying weaving. Have a wonderful week and I will connect with you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love and I'll see you next time.